So, it is Friday, and I had a feeling these pirate accounts on Twitter would post something new. This time, we got extended gameplay of Stone Hill. Um, yeah, it's only 10 seconds, but this is the longest gameplay footage we've seen since the trailer dropped on April 5th. And three major things I've noticed. One, it seems like Toys for Bob is listening to their fans. Two, the HUD for the very first time. And three, actual sound from the gameplay. Gems, grunts from the shepherds, the actual soundtrack, you get it. Now, about point number one. Guys, you can now relax. Well, a bit. Well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Toys for Bob, it seems like they fixed the color of the grass. The early screenshot of Stone Hill. A lot of people said it looked very yellowish. Now, comparing the two, the old one, with the actual new gameplay, I do see what they meant. This time, it looks closer to the original. Yeah, yeah, I'm comparing this to, like, low polygons, but I'm talking about the actual color. It's greener this time, as opposed to more yellow. I prefer this. Like, I wasn't nitpicking before, but seeing the green right now it looks much better. It just brings out the realm. So much better, it's so vibrant. So guys, they are listening. Or, we're just lucky and they decided to change the colors. But no, I have a feeling they're listening, just like how Vicarious Visions listened to fans when it came to the Ancient Trilogy. Even the sky looks closer to the original. It's getting there. I mean, looking at this screenshot, it's hard to well, actually, it did look more cloudy before, mixed with a bit of sun. But anywho, there's the blue, folks. But, but. Looking at the lighting of the level and the actual skybox this time, I feel like the level should look a bit brighter. All abort, all abort, he's nitpicking, he's fallen to the darkness. <laughs> so the lighting, there's still that warmer touch we saw from Artisans, pretty much following what Artisans looks like, comparing it to the trailer. So they might change it, we don't know. As for the buildings, the structures, well, you know me, I like to point out the obvious. More detail! Okay, we get it, Vivi, it's more detailed, shut up. Instead of just grass, we have dry spots. And I'm loving the shadows, by the way. The sheep, this time they start closer, closer to where the shepherd is standing, right in front of the whirlwind. And right there, right next to him, there appears to be a green gem. But in the original, it's not there, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the gem belongs to the ram, which are yet to be added. They are absent in this footage. Right there, there's a blue gem, and if you remember, in the original, by killing a ram, it releases a blue gem. So I'm thinking that gem right there belongs to a ram. As for why they decided not to feature the rams, well, it's still in development, I'm assuming, so there you go. As for the gem placements, they're just like the original. For example, the five red gems right there. I'm happy about Spyro's running, it's so smooth, it's so well done, it's nicely animated. And it's a bit Hero's Tale inspired, right? And the shepherds, by the way, when charging into them, you no longer get knocked back. I don't know if you guys paid attention to that, but there it is. And one thing people might start talking about a lot, the HUD. What I think about the HUD, I like it. As I said before, never expect a remake to be exactly similar, exactly the same thing as the original. Now of course, there's a bunch of different opinions out there. Maybe you might prefer how it looked before, but seeing this, I'm happy with it. Now instead of the chest, we have a gem rotating, but the numbers don't rotate. I don't mind it at all. And what does this remind us of, by the way? Spyro 2 and 3, yes, it seems like they're adding consistency to all three games. At least this is just the beginning. Oh, and by the way, the numbers jump straight into the next total instead of one by one. What I think about that, it's okay, I'm not complaining, but if they decide to make it uh, like the original, it is what it is. Oh, and don't forget you can burn the grass, which is pretty cool. We did see this briefly in the trailer. As for the sounds, the shepherds have a higher pitched grunt this time. Well, obviously, dude, this is like a remake. Well, I mean, I like pointing out these things, okay? As for the sound of the crystal dragon on top, if you pay close attention, you can hear its sound very briefly. The gems have a softer sound to them, similar to the original, but it's softer this time.
And I don't know, these days when it comes to remastering sounds and soundtracks, they generally tend to sound softer. But listening to Stone Hill's theme, it is quite nice. Now the gems, they all look similar, just like Spyro Run. Same structure, but just different colors. Oh, and they added sparkly effects when uh, collecting them, very pretty. Another little detail, flaming the treasure chests, the gem automatically comes to Spyro this time. In the original, by flaming it, the gem stands right there. Oh, and talking about sparkles, the whirlwind does have more effects to it, like those lines appearing, right? Oh, and last thing, Spyro's hitbox is pretty big. Now, this is still in development, but if you slow it down, you can definitely notice that he's not even that close to the chest. Some might say, but dude, it's his horns. The tip barely touched it, but the shepherds even. But anywho, I think I've uh, said enough about this one. So with that being said, if I missed any sort of detail, mention it in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, and uh, thank you for watching. Until next time.